Hi, I'm Underbelly, and you suck at music theory. In today's lesson, we're going to learn all about the major mode, otherwise known as the Ionian scale. Let's get started. Okay, so check it. Here we have my handy dandy keyboard, and just like Derek wetting the bed each Sunday, we're noticing that there's an unfortunate pattern here. On my keyboard, you'll see that there's two black keys followed by three black keys before the pattern simply repeats again. Two, three, two, three. And always to the left of the two black keys, we have a fun little note called C. Let's go ahead and play just the white keys from C to the next C. Oh wowzers, sounds like Derek's first day of school, before the bullying began. Now what we did there was play a scale, and a scale is just a group or subset of the 12 possible notes we have at our disposal here. So remember, it's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12 notes before the pattern simply repeats again, up what's called an octave. Now, different scales have different emotional qualities. So for example, the scale that's in your bathroom that you use to weigh yourself every morning might fill you with feelings of sadness and emptiness. Whereas the scale that, say, your local drug dealer uses to measure out doses for your entire family might sound like this. I'll fill you with happiness and joy. Those are some good drugs. Now, the scale that we're using sounds quite happy. But it doesn't sound happy because we're starting off on C. Actually, that's beside the point. Notice the pattern of how far each of these notes in the scale are apart from one another. So for example, E to F, well, we're just going from one note to the note directly next to it there. That's what's called a half step, just going from one note to the note that's adjacent to it. But when we're going from C to D at the beginning of the scale, you'll notice that there's this interloper in the middle there. So when we're going from C to D, really that's just two half steps, which make a whole step. So the pattern here really is starting with C, just whole, whole, half, whole, 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 half. And that's what really gives the major scale, or as I like to call it, the Ionian mode, its emotional quality, not its starting out on C. For example, if we start out on any other note, say G, and just follow that same pattern, whole, whole, half, whole, 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 half, remember we're using the black keys uh, to keep the same intervallic relationship present there, it's the exact same emotional quality. This is just as happy as this. Oh, wowzers. Now here's the thing, that's great and all that we can build the major scale or the Ionian mode off of any note that we want, but the real power of the scale comes when we start playing more than one note at the same time. This is called harmony, and it can sound either like this, oh wow, there's such beauty, or this, oh Jesus! Now in both cases, I'm using exclusively the scale here, but if we want our harmonies to sound pleasant, we have to be a little stricter in our approach. So for example, there's a very specific kind of harmony called a triad that people tend to use. A triad is just a chord, it's three notes, but it's created in a very specific way. So for example, to create a triad off of C, we take the root note, the bottom note in this case C, skip a note in the scale, in this case D, add the next note, skip a note, and add the next. So we're just playing a game of leapfrog here. One, two, three. Oh, wowzers. And we can do the same thing off of any note in the scale. So for example, let's try with F. Take the F, skip the next note in the scale, add a note, skip a note, add a note. Oh, wowzers. So let's just go ahead and do this for every note in the scale. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and one again. Wowzers. Now we're noticing that not all of these triads sounded exactly the same as this first one here. Some of them sounded sadder or more fucked up than others. Check this out. Take this next chord. It's a lot sadder than the first, just like our second child is sadder than our first one. 
And also, just like our second child, we can tell it's sad without even having to listen. You can just look at it. For example, in this first chord, let's just look and see how far apart this middle note is from the bottom note. Let's just count. One, two, three, four half steps between the bottom note of the chord and the middle note. What about the middle and the top? Let's count again. One, two, three. A wazer. So we're seeing that the pattern here is four half steps and then three. Together, they add up to seven. Oh, wowzers, looks like we all took grade school math here. Now let's go on to the second chord. Let's check out the pattern here. So between the bottom and the middle note of the chord, we're seeing that it's one, two, three half steps. Okay, challenging our expectations here. And then one, two, three, four. What the fuck? Okay, so we're seeing that for this chord, which sounds quite happy, it's four and then three half steps. And for the second chord, it's three and then four half steps. So for major chords, it's four, then three. For minor chords, it's three, then four. Notice that both of these add up to seven. But there's actually one chord in the scale that breaks the rule entirely, and it's built off of the last note in the scale, in this case, B. So let's build the chord once again. Take the root, skip a note in the scale, add a note, skip a note, add a note. Oh, Jesus, what the fuck? What's wrong with this chord? Should have aborted this child a long time ago. Now let's go ahead and examine and see why this chord sounds so fucked up. Okay, so from the bottom to the middle note of the chord, it looks like it's three half steps. One, two, three. It looks like just like a minor chord there, but the middle note to the top note of the scale is the same thing. One, two, three. So it's three there, three there. So that's six from the bottom to the top, six here, six down as well, six, six, six. It's the number of the beast. This chord is satanic. And for that reason, just like our third child, we try to pretend that it doesn't exist. We tend to avoid this chords simply because it's so ugly. But let's take a backtrack. Let's first off and see what the pattern is of major, minor, and diminished chords here. So it looks like it's major, minor, minor, major, major, minor, diminished, and back to one again. And notice, this exact same pattern is true regardless of what major or Ionian scale we're using. So for example, you could do it for G Ionian there. So once again, major, minor, minor, major, major, minor, diminished. Back to one. So now that we know what chords we have at our disposal when we're writing in a specific scale, in this case, Ionian, how do we start writing chord progressions? Well, here's the thing. First off, we generally want to start off with the root chord of our scale, in this case C, because we want to really establish that this is our scale here. Then we can think of going to the next chord in a couple different ways. First off, we can think of which direction we want to go to. Do we want to go up to the next chord or down to the next chord? Generally speaking, going up to the next chord creates feelings of upliftment and enlightenment, like Derek entering the second grade. Whereas going down to the next chord means Derek's going to be held back that semester. So the direction, whether we're going up to the next chord or down, matters. But it's not just the direction that matters, it's also the distance, how far we're traveling from one chord to the next. Say we're going from C to D, that's a very small distance there. But if we're going all the way from C, I don't know, to B here, okay, that's a very dramatic leap there. That's Derek, I don't know, jumping a couple grades, that's never going to happen. So not only does the direction matter, whether we're going up or down, but the distance matters as well. And finally, the quality of the next chord matters a lot. So that means whether we're going from, say, a major chord to, I don't know, another major chord. That's going to sound different than going from a major to a minor chord, for example. So whether you're going from a major to another major, major to a minor, or, I don't know, say, minor to a major, or major to a minor, all that matters. The quality of the next chord, whether it's major, minor, or diminished, it's going to have a big impact over the kind of emotion you're going to create there. 
Wowzers. Okay, so check it. If this stuff is new to you, I would highly recommend writing at least four different chord progressions using the quality, direction, and distance technique in a key other than C. And then, if you like any of the chord progressions you've written, try building a shit song around it. Remember, as Uncle Joe always told me, never stop polishing that turd. I'm Underbelly. Have a great day.